right, welcome everybody to Two Drunk Dudes in a Gun Room. Hey, today I have got Derek Thompson and TJ. They are both Marine veterans. They both are podcasting and doing awesome stuff. They are the hosts of Shadow Mark Podcast. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, man. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, so have I. I'll tell you what, man. I was trying to figure out this whole Zoom thing, and it was just, it's been a mess for me. I had to update, I had to do all these things. So yep. I was I was on here, I think, half an hour early. <laughs> I seen I seen you log on. I was like, oh, you're a little bit early. <laughs> yeah, 15 prior to 15 prior, man. I, I had to. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then TJ figured it out in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky. Well, I'm going to tell you. buttons. I pushed a few of them, and here I am. Yeah. <laughs> I, yesterday I was uh, interviewing uh, uh, an organization and the guy was like, I'm going to send you a bunch of pictures. Just share your, share my screen with everybody. And I'm like, yeah, about that. I, I don't know how to do any of that shit. I barely can record this. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're at, man. Like we struggle to just get, it's hard enough to get our own stuff recorded, let alone anyone else's and sharing yep. it. I mean, but that's been made so simple uh, through the program we've been using. So, you know, thank God for technology, making things easy. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, tell everybody a little bit about you guys yourself, man. How, how did you come about to, to go into the Marines? What was the, uh, the tipping point? TJ, how about you go first on this one, buddy? Oh man. Uh, I really don't know. I just, I thought about joining for a long time when I was in high school and my uh, brother pretty much taught me into it. He said that uh, he always wanted to join, never did, and now he's always going to have that. And, you know, I wonder how it would have been. And, you know, he's like, if you don't join, then you'll be in the same boat as me. And if you don't like it, you know, you might as well join. If you don't like it, then you should get out. And then yeah. at least you'll won't have that. wonder what it would have been like, you know. Yep. So what year did you uh, come in? I joined in 2008. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it would be you, about it was, the same it, yeah, you. So you both, both of you guys came in when the tempo was probably right there at its, uh, at its most for deployments, man. Yeah, so. that worked out. Uh, I went to the most deploying mouths in the Marine Corps, so I was <laughs> I was pretty thankful for that. Uh, yeah, and you know, I, like we get to tell everybody, we we're just you know nasty air wingers, so <laughs> weren't doing anything exciting. Yeah, but, um, so. How how many times did you guys deploy? Well, I went twice. Yeah, it seems like the Marines are such a small branch, man. That you know, in two thousand eight, with all the different areas, I mean, by then you're looking at multiple uh, theaters that that we were occupying. And uh, absolutely, how short, how small of a branch you guys are. I can imagine, man. The tempo was bad in the army. I can imagine what the tempo was for you guys. Now, how many times did you end up deploying, TJ? Uh, one officially. One officially. One officially. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I, was, I was. I was supposed to go a bunch of times, but you know, I got in a little bit of trouble here and there, and been there, know, man. <laughs> been restricted uh, a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I like what you were saying. How your brother was the one that motivated you to go to the Marine Corps. That I had, I had a lot similar situation. Yeah. Uh, my oldest brother was in the Marine Corps before me. And uh, I've kind of brought it up to him. I was like, "Hey, man, like I'm, I'm enlisted." He he goes, "You're never going to make it through boot camp. You're just such a bitch." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, okay, thanks for said, the motivational yeah, okay. speech." I said, "Yeah," I said, "Yep." Now we're going to prove you wrong, you know. <laughs> and you know, it, the rest was history. You know, I, I joined in what, November of '08, and you know, I went through the whole thing with the MCRD San Diego. TJ, did you go to San Diego or were you you were Paris Island, were you? No, I was in San Diego. Yeah, Mountain Marines. San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. We're Hollywood Marines. So I like it. Uh, <laughs> so just uh, living the glitz and the glamour. Where all were you guys yeah. stationed at then? Unofficially, I was stationed at 29 Palms, I feel like. Uh officially right. <laughs> I was stationed at uh San Diego, Camp Pendleton. Okay. Uh, but I, I think I was in trouble most of the time. So I spent most of my time actually in 29 Palms, I feel like. <laughs> uh, one, my other buddy from the Marine Corps, 
every time he'd get in trouble, I'd get in trouble. And thus, I got sent in to uh, 29 Palms, and he got to hang out and be groovy. <laughs> Down there in Camp Belton, it was, it was a bunch of bullshit. It was what it was. <laughs> they're like, we can't punish you, man. Too. Yeah, they're like, we can't punish we can't punish him. We got to punish you, Thompson. And I was like, it's <laughs> <laughs> so what what exactly is 29 poems man i've heard the greatest place it. on earth man yeah it really yeah. is it's, it's beautiful <laughs> if you ever get a chance to take your family on vacation i recommend going there and seeing <laughs> stuff like the joshua Sam. tree uh <laughs> you know they have exactly 29 poems and 29 poems <laughs> <Really? laughs> they're at, they line the entrance and so uh, you get an entryway of 29 palm trees and then the rest is, is it's like Afghanistan with cell service. <laughs> well, but you only kind of got cell service, yeah. you know, <laughs> I think <laughs> they might have had the cell, same cell service to be right honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it was golden. It, but no, it was it's 29 Palms is what you correct me if I'm wrong, TJ. It's the largest marine installation. And that's where they do a lot of like combat and explosives training and all that um okay. but we we get sent there in the, what was it camp wilson yeah that's all right i don't uh, know if you yeah, ever yeah. went to 29 stumps oh yeah much time i think camp wilson's where everybody stayed but we stayed at uh brownfield most of the time with the explosives yeah yeah and uh yeah everyone it was a great time honestly <laughs> so, i had a lot of drunken memories there Okay. The 29 Palms is over there in the same area as where like the army does. Uh, I think they call it NTC. Yeah. As I say, this sounds a lot like NTC. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's the Marines version of it. That's, that place will TJ cause PTSD. Known <laughs> army things. Good for you, TJ. Yeah. Right. I learned so an army thing. That's, so that's that National Guard coming in, man. <laughs> Hell really yeah. <laughs> so what I got to ask you, what made you go into the National Guard? Uh, having babies. <laughs> having babies. Needed in, need, yeah, needed insurance. Okay. I didn't so know I maybe you were just trying to finish out your career that way or? Well, it started off, I mean, I was about to have my first kid and just got laid off from my job. Didn't have any insurance. So I was like, you know, I'll join the National Guard. And then about a year later, I got a, another federal DOD position. Okay. And I wasn't allowed to use TRICARE from the National Guard. And then, so I just stayed down my line, to be right honest with you. Okay. But. So, so you're not active guard then? You're, you, you're doing the one week in the month and two weeks a year? Yeah. Okay. Right. I had, a, yeah, I I had several buddies that, that did the active guard. So, you know, they, they well, still did. That's a pretty the, good gig, really. It is, dude. I, yeah, I was jealous. Man. Yeah. You know. They, uh, they had, you know, just one week in a month, they wear uniforms and the rest of the time they do the same job that they would normally do, but as civilians. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really cool. And yeah, it's got all the same benefits as active duty. So, who does? Yep. Can't beat that. Yep. Yeah, uh, that'd be ideal. So, yeah. when we were deploying, we were running short on, on people to run the, uh, um, the stateside base there in, in Savannah. So a unit, a National Guard unit from Iowa was deployed to Savannah and they ran our day-to-day -day operations and kept, you know, our unit going and our equipment maintained and everything. And that's where I met that guy that he was working as the, uh, uh, as a mechanic doing uh, um, active guard stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. He actually ended up uh, deploying with me, you know, we were, uh, Again, we were short, so um, he volunteered to go to Afghanistan with me. So he was a it was a good guy, man. He, he believed that uh, the Taliban was watching us, and every time we went to the MKT to get breakfast, we would get mortared. So he had his wife mail him a uh, griddle. And he started making everybody pancakes in the tent so oh, nobody no would get mortared. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> we were like, yeah, we're not going to tell him that that's not going to change nothing. We ain't got to walk to the, have uh, green eggs and ham, said Sam. <laughs> hey, 
there's nothing wrong with green eggs and ham. Let's just, I mean, well, I mean, there is, but it just depends <laughs> yeah. on the situation. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> that's what they're feeding us overseas anyway. Well, yeah, that's, I know. I had a, a young E6 that was uh, my supervisor. And uh, when uh, we were doing the three MREs a day um, shit before uh, the Canadians brought in the MKTs there in Kandahar. And dude, he thought the MKTs and sea rats was like real food. And I would, he got up early and he's like, I'm going to go get a real breakfast. I said, why are you in a what? hurry to go get a real breakfast? <laughs> he said, man, it's going to be a real breakfast. They, they up there cooking. I said, no, they're up there boiling aluminum cans that has the same shit that was in your bag, just in a much larger portion. He yeah, said, like no, when bu- you walk by that shit, it says not for human consumption. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like bullshit, man. And he, he gets up there and, and he comes back. He was mad as hell because there was the same off-colored eggs and same bullshit. I just laughed, man. I said, you ain't been in the army long enough. Yeah, that was the one thing, I guess. When we went to the uh, chow hall uh, overseas, like that was the only way to make sure you got kind of real food Yeah, was to get an omelet. Oh, yeah, yeah. The breakfast. From, from, the, from the Haji guy. Yep. Uh, where you yeah, sat yeah. there and he, the, you watched them crack the egg and you're like, all right. And yeah. that, that was just like the greatest thing on earth. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like it, it's It's the small stuff. It is. That's why, you, you know, you're in the military, you get out and you're just like, everyone complains about stuff and we're just like, yeah, no, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this, man. My life's pretty good. Yeah. I, I worked in a, a, a refinery and uh, I have guys that just like come unglued and I'm like, dude, it's lead. You, <laughs> it's not a big deal, man. I yeah, said, just let me go. The world will still go around because you were a little bit late loading a truck. I mean, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What's that? I just said shit'll buff out. Yep, that's what I said, man. You know, I don't, I don't get stressed over that shit. I got, I, mean, I got enough, of, I got enough shit to get stressed over. I don't need that shit. Yeah, I got anxiety right. and stress coming out of my <laughs> ass anyway. The last thing I need is to add to that with like small stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. That's another reason why I'm kind of glad I closed my business because, man, just the stress of of running it was was hard on myself as well, and that was before I'd, I'd gotten help, so. It didn't. It didn't contribute very well, you know, to my uh, my health, anyways. So. Yeah, I'm sure. What Definitely. were you doing? I owned a a trucking company. Oh, okay. Real small, real small company. But yeah, yeah. that'll keep you busy, man. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a payment due every week. <laughs> 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 I would literally. I was like deployed again, man. I would spend six weeks out on the road and then come home for a week. Been six weeks out on the road and come home for a week. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, so. I, I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's why it, I missed the military. It was so structured. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, and I was like, you know, there'd be weeks I'd be like, well, shit, I made money, but I didn't get to keep any of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tired. Yeah, I feel like the, yeah, that ties into the military. It's like I should. God damn it! It's like I'm, I should have made a shit ton of money, and I don't get to keep any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the best part about being active duty is all you have to do is stay alive, don't kill anybody else, and stay out of jail. And I did those three things at least like 70% of the time. Yeah. So it was pretty easy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and that's what everybody – so, you know, when you're deployed, everybody's like, you know, would you go back? And you're like, yeah, man, because life is fucking simple over there. You know, you wake yeah. up, you stay alive, you do your job, and you go home. Wash, rinse, repeat. I mean, that's life. Yeah, I've gotten I've gotten so much shit. People are like, I've had a, a several people in the last, you know, a couple of years, obviously. But they're like, man, they're like, how hard was it being deployed? I was like, bro, it was so easy. It was like, wake up, don't die, go to bed. Yeah. I was like, that was it, man. It was like, do your job, yeah. don't die. Yeah. I was like, that's all it is, man. Like, I said, I would kill to do that again. Yeah. Yeah, especially for some of that Blackwater money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if I can make good contractor money and yeah. do that again, all over again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. I'd do it in a heartbeat for the trash money that I was making. I, I don't know. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I just to get rid of some of the. If I could just do it and live, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah, just some of the bullshit you see in the civilian world. It's, <laughs> it's, it's funny, man. 
like you deal with civilian life. I, mean, I get why people say civilian life is so stressful because you yeah. add in all these stressors. You know, you know, you're like, oh shit, there's bills to pay. I got, I got my boss. He's always pissed off because he's got somebody down his neck, and then you know, there's getting written up. It's kind of like modern day military, I guess. Anyway, you know, where you everything's, fired. everything's paperwork. Yeah, and you, you don't know? know how many times somebody's gotten pissed off, and I said, dude, do you need some of my fucking meds? Because I'm the I'm the one that should be fucking flipping out here. You're you're the yeah. one that, that don't even fucking have any PTSD. You're the one that's fucking just going ape shit. You know, yeah. They I, keep I, that's why I say, there is a mental health problem in America because even there civilians is. are they're, fucked up. They're medicating the wrong people. That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah, that's what led me to to the problems I had because I was I would tell everybody I'm not fucked up. You're I'm the normal one. You, you are <laughs> doing pretty up. good. I'm doing pretty good. You know that's what I would tell people. If you don't like what I have to say, <laughs> then you're just fucked up. That's the problem. <laughs> so I've so, been trying to get across, man. I get it. Yep. So so when you guys got out of the uh the Marines, man, um what do you what did you guys uh do to get when you got out? Eric, you want to take this one? Yeah, you betcha, man. Yeah, so I got out, uh, and then I started plumbing for about a year, but I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a firefighter in the EMT. So uh, I went got my EMT license again, did that whole spiel and that whole rigmarole. Uh, after that, I ended up getting hired on about a year after I got out of the Marine Corps. I got hired on the fire department. I did the fire department thing for 10 years and i loved it man i'll tell you what outside the military it's the greatest job on earth yeah and, and i mean that i've done i've done damn near anything in between at this point in my life yeah and the fire department was the greatest thing it gave me a sense of purpose that you need when you get out of the military yeah uh, it gave me everything i needed you know it paid the bills i had benefits i had the whole kit and caboodle and the thing yeah. I got to fight fires and do what a lot of people don't want to do. I got to help people every day. I mean, and I think there's kind of a misconception with that. Mm-hmm. 90% of what goes into fire and EMS is EMS. Yeah. Uh, and I think people kind of misconstrue that. Even in the big cities, you know, a lot of what they do is EMS. I mean, yeah. you, I you get know, that. you you get called to a old lady that fell or you get called to all this small stuff and, and to they, these people it's a huge deal yeah and it was such a blessing to get to meet all the people i've got to meet and just see their pain and see the other kind of side of the coin from the military mm-hmm. you know in the military obviously we saw everyone trying to be tough yeah it's a whole different world when you when you see like the civilian world and what you know is hard for them and you, and you get kind of an eye-opening experience where you're just like I can help these people. Yeah. Yep. I can be there for them. And it was such a blessing, but that's what I did. I ended up doing that for 10 years. I got injured on the job, went through a floor of a fire, fell about 13 feet in full bunker gear. Holy shit. Uh, Next morning had another fire, ended up working to exhaustion. I think two two guys ended up with uh, CO poisoning. I probably had CO poisoning, but I refused to quit. And just kind of kept working. My battalion chief finally ripped me out. And he goes, sit down, quit doing shit. <laughs> and I was like, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Sitting there. And I was just like, God, my shoulder hurts, man. And I was like, shit, my body hurts. So I went in to the doctor thereafter. I tore my shoulder. I had nerve damage throughout my spine and my back. Uh, ended up tearing labrums in both hips. Uh, and it became a three year process of rehabilitating myself and kind of relearning how to be human. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, which, which sucked. Yeah. Uh, I tried to go back to work a couple times after I had my shoulder surgery and got through that. But the whole problem with getting my shoulder surgery was I had nerve damage. Yeah. So they were like, well, we got to wait. And then they gave me a cortisone shot. And he's like, oh, we got to wait at least six months or something like that. After that, you can't do surgery because you had a cortisone shot. So I did that. 
finally got my shoulder surgery done. And I, as soon as I could, I was like, I'm going back to work. Got back to work. Hips started giving me fits. Went in because I thought it was my knee. Mm-hmm. I was like, my knees suck, bro. He's like, yeah, it turns out it's not your he's knees, jackass. It's your hips. And I was like, oh. <laughs> he's like, you're looking at full hip replacement in 10 years. And so we ended up have to figure out time to do my hips. I had both hips done. While I was doing that, I was kind of like, I need to find something, I guess, that's going to be easier on my body. Yeah. And I was married at the time. So we decided to move down to Phoenix. Moved down to Phoenix. I started a job doing plastics, uh, injection molding. Uh, cool gig. Yeah. They do a lot of interesting things. Uh, then, you know, my life fell apart because I was trying to figure everything out. It was like starting over. I mean, it was like getting out of the military. Yeah. And I think that step finally started when I got down to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Where I was like, how in the shit do people do this? Yeah. So I yeah. did that. Uh, life kind of took its twists and turns. I ended up getting divorced again. Um, ended up leaving injection molding, leaving Arizona. Came back to Nebraska. I did sprinklers for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and did that for a skosh. Uh, ended up leaving, moving to Utah. I was a coal miner for three months. Wow. Yeah. And then I was like, this is sweet. And I like that. Uh, but I needed the support in the family system. Yeah. So I came back here to Nebraska. Now I'm doing like city trash. I do inspect potatoes. I do, I sell supplements. I, I do a little bit of everything. Okay. But, uh, you know, from plumbing to mining, injection molding, <laughs> been there, done that. You know, I checked the list off. That's what I've been doing since I got out. Yeah. I mean, TJ's what, been a lot more consistent. That's the way the military veterans are, man. I mean, we, we get out and we're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. May not have a clue to him yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. You know, yeah. it, it's that type A personality. Man. <laughs> yeah, the last, uh, I gave my resume to, uh, who was it, to the city here to go just be a trash guy. And he's like, you're way overqualified. You know that, right? And I was like, nah, it's whatever, man. I'm just happy to have a job. Yeah. I said, you got benefits. So I'm not going to complain, man. I said, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to get out there and sling and do whatever I got to, man. And and, and it reduces the uh, the stress. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So I'm all about it, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to get through life, survive life, get through it, have fun. Yep. I That's agree, where I'm man. at right now. So how did how did you two uh, meet and and how did the podcast come together? TJ, you take this one. You got my favorite story. You know my favorite story. We're uh, gonna go through this for like the fifteenth time, but I don't give a shit. You're telling the story. It's right, from the stash so man. We uh, <laughs> ended up getting deployed and being together on deployment, and that's where I met him. Okay, and um, he was. I guess kind of my boss, like one of my bosses, he was a um, my NCO. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I remember everybody was like, man, you want to stay away from Thompson? He's kind of a dick. And I met him and I was like, man, he like he is a dick, but I'm a dick also. And, you know, we just started being dicks together. Not in a weird way or nothing, but, I mean, <laughs> you know, but so uh, we kind of end up being homies or whatever. And then just after the deployment or whatever, we just kept in touch. And that was back in 2011. So. Okay. All right. You miss a, you, you, we've got some large points here missing. <laughs> what, which, what part of the story are you actually talking about? All right. Let's talk about the mustache, mustache story. Uh, let's get to the right. thing. How we, how we actually met there. Like the final, what was like the tipping point of uh, t- us meeting where I was like, you know what? This devil dog's good shit. I like this it's guy. A, was this Halloween? With Staff Sergeant. Yeah, right, yeah, our yeah, Halloween yeah. story. Because that was right. that was like the the uh that was the final tipping point. That was the straw that broke Camel's back, per se, <laughs> for me liking you as much <laughs> as I do. Yeah, so I, I might be a little bit, you know, eccentric at times, but <laughs> so anyway, uh it was around Halloween time and I was just trying to keep morale up because everybody's you know bummed out because you're in afghanistan and shit but um i had a 
some jeans that I'd made into like, you know, cut off jeans. And I'm talking like Daisy Dukes, like your ass cheeks hang out the bottom. <laughs> and I also, shortly before I went on the deployment, had lost a bet. So I brought the results of that with me also, which was a bright neon green man thong. <laughs> so, and I bought uh, a shirt from bodybuilding.com, cut the sleeves out of it. And I tied it in a knot, you know, and yep. I have on these, these short shorts, mass cheeks hanging out and have put the, the man thong like up over my hips, like all the, you know, <laughs> the, all the cool girls do. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I had a, a pretty sweet ass mustache. I call it my uh, outstanding Afghanistan. And then we had this staff sergeant who was a really big manly man. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the guy big. inclined bench press is 425. He is the yeah. biggest man I've met in my life. Wow. <laughs> He's a big dude. But uh, he was in his office and he was FaceTiming his girlfriend or wife or whoever she was. And I just went in there and I was like, hey, staff aren't. And he, he was like, what's up, Davidson? And I sat on his lap and I was like, well, how's about you and me rub our mustaches together and see if we can't get stuck together like Velcro? And then his... <laughs> The lady that he was talking to was like, what in the fuck are you doing over there? And, <laughs> you know, just, he wasn't very happy about the whole deal. <laughs> and uh, he, he attempted to take my life a few times. Uh, <laughs> that. But uh, we, he, he, he was successful. so much fun, man. It was so much fun with him. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, I love that you had the bodybuilding.com t-shirt. That was when <laughs> bodybuilding.com was big. That's yeah, actually, right. I bought a t-shirt from uh, uh, bodybuilding.com that got me ranked the 13th biggest douche in the on the planet, on the chive. <laughs> nice. Uh, I actually have that photo here. It was, uh, I had a t-shirt on it that says, cheat on your girlfriends, not your workouts. And uh, I, was in, I was in really good shape back then, man. Yeah. And it was great. And yeah, that. So those those were good times. Like that was back when life was a lot simpler. Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. So, uh, what made you guys decide to start the podcast? Oh, well, let's, geez, let's back TJ. Up. So, so you said you you rebranded it. So what, what, let's what was the uh, the original podcast called? So the original podcast was never broken. Uh, we had a third guy that was a part of it. Uh, and he's just, he got kind of occupied with life. Mm -hmm. Everything was hitting him, you know, so we had to rebrand and kind of do this thing. But initially, uh, TJ actually came to me and was like, Hey man, I want to do something for the veteran community. And I was like, yeah, dude, so do I like, absolutely. And then I was thinking, Hey, our buddy had mentioned wanting to do something as well. So we brought it and kind of brought him in. We brought his idea and it was basically his, just his name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what he brought. He had a great name, great branding. It was awesome. Loved it. Uh, he's told us we can use it. We agreed just to kind of separate ways that way. We it, was, it wasn't worth losing a friendship over right, uh, or anything like that. So we kind of <laughs> just pat toss that back to him. Uh, because we had like 30 episodes of our podcast on the, under that name. And then, uh, we decided to rebrand, kind of restart fresh. And okay. we've had a great, great job uh, since then. But TJ came to me and was like, I want to do this. And I was like, hey, man, I was like, you know, like, I was like, I've always wanted to do a podcast. And we were like, yeah, TJ, was like, hell yeah, man. So we kind of pondered on this for a couple months. TJ comes to me and he's just like, hey, bro, it's pretty easy. You just got to do this. He's like, he sends me this link. And I was like, well, shit. I was like, let's do it then. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. I was like, I'm all Hell about yeah. this. And TJ's got so many great plans for where we want to go in the future. And I'm so excited for it. And TJ, I'll let you, I'll toss this back over to you, but kind of give your like input and your, where you came from with this, where you wanted to go from it because for me it was just all about like i just wanted to help veterans any way i could yeah yeah for me i was just tired of watching all my friends kill themselves you know yeah. we've been through a lot of shit um some pretty terrible things overseas and even in stateside and then you get through all that just to come home get out and kill yourself and um i don't know what the what the 
actual like root cause of all this is like what the main deal is going on, but it's, it's ridiculous. It's getting way out of hand. And, um, just want to do something to try to, to, to combat the veteran suicide, you know, mostly. And, um, didn't, obviously we don't know what we're doing and we don't know how to stop it or really how to help. The one thing that I've noticed that helps me anytime I'm having a hard time is drinking beer and talking to my buddies who have gone through the same thing. Yep. You know, my, um, they can relate to you, you know? Yep. So whenever he said podcast, I was like, Oh hell yeah. Like let's fucking fire it up yeah. and, uh, see where it goes. Yeah, man. So, I, you know, that's real similar to, to how our stuff is. So we wanted to do something to, to give back to the veteran community. And so we, we went down to our local VFW and it was me and my old first son. And we got not the experience that we was expecting, you know, the meetings consisted of bragging about how much money they made in bingo. And then they would talk about what they're going to do for the boy scouts and the girl scouts, which is great right. things. But the whole time we're there, we did nothing for veterans, nothing. You know, six, right. seven months goes down. And I was like, yeah, this ain't what we signed up for, man. You know, so we decided to start a podcast. And the original goal was just to highlight veterans, just to bring veterans on and, and surround them with like minded people and, and network. And dude, I'm telling you, it's just it just keeps growing from there. You know, it's gone from that to now a radio station and and everything else. And and it, it takes a, it takes shape of itself and it kind of takes its own path, you know? And like what you said, um, I think organizations like what us, whether it be podcasters or singers or, or nonprofit organizations, these small little veteran ran communities is the right answer to solve the problems, you know? Yeah, I absolutely. And, I got to agree with you. And I, I've been so happy to you know get drug into the world with you and see everything you're doing I, i've been so proud of what you've been doing uh, that's why i've been trying to share everything i can do everything i can to help support you as well it's it's cool to see and, and, and to go kind of along with what tj said um you know it's not that we didn't know anything we knew talking helps yeah to the right person you know, yeah. you know and it's not so much talking so much as it is getting to be around like-minded people uh getting to hear the stories of people getting to just know understand and know that it's not you and alone in the situation yeah so yeah. our second project um that that i took on i try to do a project <clears throat> a year right something to improve my foxhole and uh the second project was an app i wanted to create an app that had a, a direct way for veterans to say, I'm having a shitty time right now. I need to talk to somebody. And so that app I created, it's got the ability to, to hit, it just uses WhatsApp. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had, I've had times where I've gotten woke up to, you know, a message and, and I'll sit there and chat with a guy and, and we don't even talk about anything that happened to him, the, the problems he's having, we're just talking and, and having jokes and everything else. And, right. and dude, you know, taking their mind off the current situation until they can calm down and, and think things through is, is wonders that, that yeah, how important that is networking? Reason. Oh yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's extremely important, you know, and, and these organizations I think are, are amazing. Like these, uh, um, outdoor organizations that, that take people hunting, fishing and hiking and, and that type of stuff where it's a group and you can in, interchange like uh, your phone numbers and Facebook accounts. And, right. and now you just met a veteran that, you know, you're like, holy shit, I was in that same location, blah, 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 you know, and you've got, now you've got a lifeline that you can reach out to when, when there's problems. And I, and I think that's how we, we start. That's where the foundation comes from. We, we, we surround ourselves back in our ranks and from there we just figure out the problems and, and, and move forward, you know? Yeah. I love that. I mean, that's been, that's why I love having TJ around. He's got so many good ideas. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a simple minded guy. I just here to make, you know, entertainment for people. I want to help talk to people. I'm, I've got an open ear for anyone that needs it. Yeah. Uh, TJ does such a great job. He's got great ideas all the time about what he wants to do, where where we're going with things. 
Uh, and I'm really excited in the direction that we're headed. We just did uh, here in North Platte, we just did kind of our first ruck march, which we okay. ended up having like 15 people show up mm-hmm. to, which was, you know, given the fact that I did this on a month notice, <laughs> pretty good. You know, yeah. I felt pretty good about it because I, I didn't get any, like, I didn't get any real advertisement out there for it. I came up with a banner and a little printout. Uh, but I just posted on Facebook and I was like, Hey, you know, and I just reached out to the people I knew and we ended up having 15 people show up and, and do a 5k ruck march for just raising awareness. And it was, it was so fun. It was so cool. But TJ has a lot of big ideas like that, that he wants to do and hopefully can bring a lot more awareness to, cause I'm in Nebraska yeah. and he's in Oklahoma yeah, uh, and he's in like a little bit more of a, it's weird because you're not in the metropolitan area, but you're closer to a metropolitan right. area than me. So you right. can actually get out there and do that. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm in like the uh, biggest town within four four hours either way. Yeah, I, I, it's know, not, I know. It's not very big. I know where North Platte <laughs> is. I used to play them in football. In <laughs> yeah, high it's not very big, man. Yeah. We're, we're, we're a pretty small town, and yeah. we're but we're the biggest town within four hours, you know. Other than Carney and and then Hastings or whatever, which is three two hours, two three hours. Yeah, they kick up uh, too. You know, so it, but it's fun. It, it's just I'm blessed to be where I'm at right now, and I love it's Nebraska. cool. It's cool to have a low, you know, low, be bi locational. Yeah. Where we're able to do this from two locations, I need to make it down to Oklahoma here soon, but. I'm just, uh, I love doing this, man. It's so much fun. What would what, you call that? Bi-locational? <laughs> yes. I just uh, made that so, up. So, I no, I, I love that. I love that. Also, like, I just got to give you props. Like, you're doing a fucking bang-up job being my hype man. I appreciate you on that. <laughs> you're um, welcome. But since we're bi-locational, uh, I think that we should, our pronouns should be here or there. Here or <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the one hit wonder comes in, man. Yeah, I'm gonna He's have our, to. I'm gonna have to edit this and, and start correcting everything with the here and there. <laughs> here and there. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at, man. So, it's it. okay. You did. You didn't know. Like, I'm not upset. I just. But from now on, <laughs> yeah. like, if if you're referring to it, yeah, I love our here and there, and uh, <laughs> it really does. It makes me happy, man. Uh, okay. Because we're able to just get, we're able to reach more people that way. Yeah. I feel. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean. You know, if you guys ever got to the point where you decided to start expanding chapters, I mean, you guys instantly would have two places already, you know? Yeah. So, and that's yeah. kind of where we're heading, man. Uh, Is it? TJ, I don't know. You can kind of give, if you want to, kind of give your, uh, what you want to do in the future. Because I'm uh, not like, I'm not like a big, uh, I don't know, like, a, I don't have land and I'm not like such a good hunter. I'm kind of a retard when it comes out. Uh, but TJ's not. TJ's real good at this stuff. You know, well, I don't have any land or anything, but, like, I know how to shoot good. <laughs> but <laughs> now they uh, – <laughs> so as far as, you know, future plans or whatever, it would be nice for us to be able to have events in as many states as possible. So something along the lines of having, you know uh, – Locational ambassadors. Okay. Yeah, I like you know. the idea of having bilocational ambassadors. Yeah. Trilocational. <laughs> like try be, they're yeah. try trilocational. They like to try yeah. anything. Hell yeah. <laughs> so but, when you say uh, events, are we are you talking about like hunting events or, or yeah, a little it, bit. So if there's because like you were saying earlier, there's a whole lot of organizations that take veterans out on guided hunts and stuff. And most of them are nonprofits. So it's usually free for the veterans and everything like that. So if we could find, you know, one of those organizations and as many states as possible, then hook up the veterans who want to try it out, get them in touch with these organizations and see if we can't get them involved in it. Okay. Kind of a thing. Um, also like along the lines of events, doing like ruck marches, like what Derek did. Yeah. But you know, have one held in, you know, as many different places as we could yeah. and just different things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just, all, just it's get people involved like, and get people together. Have, have you it's guys gotten like, in yeah. contact with uh, Ruck for Warriors with Scott? I've been, I've been trying to get in contact with him. Uh, I, I, I told him to reach out to me and he was like, yeah, hell yeah, brother. And I'll get a touch. And then I kind of forgot to follow up with him and try to yeah. contact, hunt him down. 
Uh, but we we have gotten in touch with the Reverend Warriors. Okay. And I believe that's tomorrow. Yep. I believe we're talking to Reverend Warriors tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so we're really excited, man. Uh, and we're just trying to kind of do a lot. It's a lot like uh, 22 Mohawks. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to Dave and Stacey. They're, they're on the schedule. I'm I love Dave about and Stacey, that man. Too. They're so yeah, you, cool. They're just an incredible them. organization. Uh, but where they're doing, you know, trying to get a somebody to skydive in every state across the union, you yeah. know, and, and do that stuff. It's so cool. We're, yeah. we're, that, that, that's a lot what we want to do. And like I said, we're trying to build networking. Uh, we've got, I've, I've gotten in touch with a uh, hunting or a fishing company. Or he, do, he does everything. God, he does everything up in Michigan. I've got a company here in Nebraska that I'm trying to reach out to. Unfortunately, he's had a family tragedy. Uh, so I'm kind of giving him some time and yeah. hopefully everything gets figured out there. We've talked to Jason Steiner, uh, which I'm pretty sure you've talked to. Uh, I love Jason. He's just an incredible guy. He does so much, so much for the veteran community. Yeah, I'm, and, I'll be up there for Hero Stock. I'm coming up to, uh, I'm going to stay. Yeah, we'll be there too. I hope TJ's there. Uh, we found a big, burly, hairy biker dude to bring him up if if, if he can't drive himself. So <laughs> You have you to know. wear the Daisy Duke shorts, though. I, that's oh, what yeah. I want to see. Like, I want to see TJ on the back of a bike and Daisy Dukes. With, right the, now, with a bodybuilder.com t-shirt <laughs> yeah right up with a man hell yeah <laughs> that's what i want to see man so i'm i'm so excited for hero stock if people don't know what that is check yeah. it out check out jason steiner uh he's on multiple shows he's been on your show right yep yep uh, he's been on our show give him a shout man he's just such an incredible human being and he, he does is. so much he does so much for us too yeah i mean he's constantly he's sending me information and yep. like i'm just like god bless you man because yep. he, he's, i'm trying he's not, to balance 18 things yep and and you know what i love about him is he's like this is my niche this is what i do and then when he comes across somebody that that needs something else or he thinks they should be on a show dude he's like sending them to us you know and, and he's like hey, exactly you know versus you know you got some of these guys that are trying to keep the thunder to themselves and you know and like i told told eric and 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 everybody dude i i don't give a shit about downloads and and, and all that shit i i look at them occasionally just to see if i'm getting out there you know yeah i would like to hope that there's veterans listening to <laughs> my content you know and uh you know, I sent a message to Eric because uh, I got onto Good Pods. I ain't been on there forever. I had to re. As a matter of fact, my phone had deleted it. I had to reinstall it, and uh, I went and looked at theirs to see if they were on Good Pods. That's actually originally why I went there. And when I pulled up their their podcast, they they hadn't even set up an account. And with them not even being on the app, they were already ranked 29th. And That's I was awesome. like, I was like, holy yeah. shit, dude! So I, I screenshot it and sent it to Eric. I was like, dude. Take a look. I said, y'all are like 29th out of a hundred and you're not even on this app, you know? So I started sharing all their stuff on there. You know, I thought, dude, I was like, man, that's awesome. Man, we were fucking, when we had never broken, we were like fifth in like India. It was the strangest thing. Yeah, it was so weird. It was like some (laughs) random country. And I was like, how the hell did we end up fifth there? (laughs) I'm going to tell you, dude, indie podcasts are it's a huge, huge market. It's it's way bigger than the American podcast. It's uh, wild, so, man. But you, yeah, you know, like I said, man, I'm with you, man. We we don't focus so much on that. We're just we just want to help. Yep. And for us, and to be a little bit uh, foretelling of what we do, a little bit more foretelling. It, it's not just about vets. It's about heroes. Yeah. Um, because we're what we're seeing is we're seeing an uptick in the number of uh, suicides basically in the community of veterans first responders nurses doctors anyone that you consider like a hero yeah in I mean, today's society we have seen such a huge uptick in that so we're trying to you know i think we've kind of fallen back into the veteran thing but i'd really like to start bringing back on more firefighters emts first responders fire police officers stuff like that again too as well just because we are seeing such a large number of suicides and issues within those communities as well and to to me 
they're just as much a part of the veteran community as the veteran community. I mean, because they're, they're out there doing so much for our day to day and for our country. I have a hard time just sitting there and just being like, well, let's just ignore them because it it doesn't seem right to me. Isn't it kind of shitty that that the the highest suicide rate falls amongst the people that are serving the community? Isn't that the people that that care the most? That is the people that care the most are the ones that are killing themselves at the highest rate. And it's just, it's unbelievable. And I wonder, you know, I mean, I hate to go down another rabbit hole, but I wonder if that has something to do with, um the fact that everywhere you look it's nothing but negative i mean you think about this you know if if you were a nurse or a cop and you kept dealing with the same guy you sewed the same guy up from a gunshot a week later he's back there again or an overdose victim and a week later they're back there and you know and then you go on the the news at home and it's just all doom and gloom and how the world's going to end you know and when you only see negative at work, you know, because it's every, everywhere you go, it's, it's someone's emergency. It may not be your emergency, but it's someone's emergency, you know, paramedics, you know, come right. across a child that had nothing to do with anything in the world that, that was brutally hurt because of a car accident or, or anything, you know, I got a, I got a buddy of mine. I'm going to link you guys up. He lives in Pennsylvania. Um, we were in the same unit. He was in uh um, the infantry, he got medically put out. Um, he was, a, a an inf- infantryman. I was a mechanic and, uh, he, uh, he's now a volunteer firefighter and he does that more than he does his work up there in, in Pennsylvania. And I see him post stuff all the time about, you know, the trials and how hard it is. And, and yeah. you know, when, when they deployed their last time, they had, a, they had a lot of, they lost a lot of people, you know? So I know he fights with, that a lot too so i'm I'm gonna link you guys up man maybe you guys can can get together maybe there's a story or something there you can put on yeah we'd love to man i mean anytime we get a chance to talk to somebody we're excited i mean same thing i mean i think it was what two weeks ago we talked to staff sergeant ramiro vasquez on podcast it was such a fun time man and that's somebody i'll I'll get you his information i'll ask him if it's okay if you reach out to him but he was the sniper in the army and Mm -hmm. now he does uh police for, he's a police officer uh, for the university here in Nebraska at Lincoln, I believe. Lincoln okay. uh, could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Lincoln. Uh, but he's got some crazy stories. He's got a lot. There's so much more to him. And I, I wish we would have had more time to dig into a story. Yeah. But it is just incredible. And uh, it, it's cool to get to talk to these people. It, it's yeah. just to hear their stories. And that's what we're about, too. I mean, it's just sharing veterans and police officers and firefighters and everyone's story getting yeah. it out there i mean i think we have the chance here hopefully soon to get a talk to an actual psychologist uh doctor and kind of pick her mind on what it is within the brain and we're going to be able to learn a lot more like get yeah. on the actual mental health side of things i'm super excited about it Dude, that is a good idea i never thought about that that's a good idea yeah and, and if, if if things go well I'll, I'll put her in touch with you uh i'm super excited about it it's going to be a good time yeah. I if we don't burn that bridge out. first <laughs> yeah we're going to try not to burn that bridge because you know me and tj you get a lot with us <laughs> you know what i mean sometimes i can be a son of a bitch you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh oh. tj's also a volunteer firefighter by the way so he's got that side of the things uh, wow, things man. to it so he he's out there doing things he's he's just a great guy uh, that's he, awesome I love it. so i just did an interview with a guy and 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 you guys should reach out to him if you need help getting in contact i'll put you guys in contact too his name is dexter pitts <clears throat> all right he was a uh, uh infantryman in the army and got blown up by an IED, um, minor dam not minor damage. He had damage from his, uh, his left arm is what got injured. And he's had a long road since then he's recovered and is now who used to be a, uh, LMPD, um, police officer. So he was there for the riots and everything that happened with, uh, oh, shit. with, uh, Brittany, uh, whatever her name is that, um, got, that got killed. And then he also became a border patrol agent. And then he also 
worked for the local police department out there. And then he came back Holy to, cow. to uh, LMPD. And now, just recently, I don't know, he's, he's in another form of law enforcement. Man. But he has an amazing story. Uh, he wrote the book called uh, uh, I Am Pitts, um, An American Patriot. And, and his podcast, dude, is brutal. I mean, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, he he will. He has no fear of saying whatever is on his mind. You know, his his yeah, last his last podcast was about uh, transgenders, and he started oh, out God. talking about uh, 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 a guy that was upset with the uh, um, customs, the, the the people that do the security at the airport. PSA. Yeah, they they said that she, she said. You squished my balls. <laughs> and when he was reading that article, he's like, she said you squeezed my balls. And she was crying in pain because of how hard she's like, my balls hurt. My balls hurt. <laughs> it's like, uh, at what and, point do you just go, uh, sir, this is not a man problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and I mean. He, he, he brought up the article and I was like, Ooh, I'm going to eat some popcorn and, and watch your comments. Cause this is going to get good. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to sit back and watch this. Cause this is going to be interesting. Yep. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yep. As a matter of fact, I think at eight o'clock tonight, um, that episode will be on gun room radio. I think that, oh, that's, that's going to be incredible. I, on I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to in, check folks. it out. It's, it's going to get nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to get her nuts. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> but, yeah. That's I incredible. Mean, dude, he, he, he is a great guy. I mean, very religious, um, God-fearing man. And to read his book, dude, it, I was just like, like the first day I, I was reading it, I was laughing because the shit he was talking about um, in basic training, it brought back, you know, funny memories for me. And then, like. By the second and third day, I was in tears because it brought back not so good memories for me, you know. And I was like, "Holy fuck, this right. is gonna be a goddamn roller coaster." Yeah. <laughs> and I think, and I think a little bit of that's good for everybody is just to have that kind of roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, it, it's always good. Uh, yeah. Just that's why I love talking to TJ, and I, I just reached out to one of my old buddies from the Marine Corps here two days ago, and we just talked for a couple hours. Yeah. And I was just like, man, it's like, I just love having that. Yeah. And, it's important, brother. It really is. And, you know? uh, which, you know, gosh, speaking of guests that were incredible, we had uh Nick Wingo on. He's such a good guest. He was a firefighter that dealt with PTSD. Mm -hmm. He's written, he's written a book about it. He, now he does like breathing techniques and all this crap. And he, that was one of my favorite podcast episodes. I think was Nick Wingo. Yeah, he's, he's so fun, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's a he's a good dude and has a lot of good information. Yeah, like if you ever want to talk to somebody outside the veteran community that's just a great help, he he's incredible. I love him so much. I really do. He's just such a good dude. Like you said, God fearing man. He's just I don't know how he does it, man. He's so cool. Yeah. Uh, just my brother put me in touch with him uh, and I've just I was like, this guy, what what doesn't he do? He's yeah. incredible. And, and I think that's important for things like what me, you and, and uh, Eric and, and them do is, is to make sure that we, we are not only putting the emphasis on the crisis that's happening, you know, but to put those role models up there, too, for people to say, hey, look at this guy's story and look where he's at today. And then yeah. talk about the trials he went through. So you see, hey, you're not alone. This guy didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, you know what? I'm better. Let's go. You know, he went through these trials and, and our show gets to, to uh, describe those and, and get those out to veterans so they can say, you know, when I was on that, when I heard that show, you know, that guy had bad days too, but tomorrow was yeah, a better day. That is such a great point that there are so many trials and tribulations that come with trying to get better. Yeah. And I think people people are going to be a lot better off if they know that, if they understand that, you know, every day isn't going to be gold. Yep. It's not rainbows and fairy tales mm -hmm. every day. Yep. The more yeah, we you know, someone, deal with it, the better. One of my buddies told me one time, and I think 
you were talking to him also, Derek, on our previous podcast, but something that he said that really stuck with me was uh, if you're going through hard times and you're thinking about doing something that's permanent, just give it one more day. And every time that you're thinking about harming yourself or doing like that, give it one more day. Yeah. And then eventually you're going to be surprised because if you keep giving it one more day, then you're going to wind up getting better and figuring everything out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's and, brilliant. And I think that's, that's, that's the important part man, right there. Whatever it takes to get that guy to, to see tomorrow or that girl to see tomorrow, it's, it's important because if they don't see tomorrow, then they don't see it through. Yep. You know? And I think, yeah, that's, I think, yeah. So yeah, like you said, I think that's great. Yeah. You know, I just, I and think it, too many people forget about what they have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with me, you know, when, when I got out, I, I honestly didn't know I had PTSD. I honestly, I, I thought everybody else was fucked up and I was the normal one. You know, but the shit I was doing now that, you know, I look back at it, that wasn't normal. I mean, I literally went home, ate my dinner, and then went straight to my bedroom, left my rest of my family out there. I didn't feel comfortable even in my own home with my own family. You know, I would get in the bedroom and I felt comfortable. I'd sit in there and watch TV and go to bed, you know. Um, I can't, I can't describe it. The way I just describe it is, is sometimes just, I get this fire in me and I'm just irritable and I have to explode, you know, and that's what, uh, you know, a lot of it, they, they say is anxiety, but, uh, it led me to do the, the point that I got to, to get help was, uh, we had a hurricane in, uh, um, Savannah and I came home. I was driving a truck at the time. And I came home and uh I I just I just couldn't deal with it, man. Um there were so many people in my house, you know, because my my son's girlfriend's family, my son, my daughter, my wife, myself, their mother. I mean, there was like a ton of people that lived in trailers that were we were at my house. And we're on like day two you know, of the, the hurricane getting over and they had, they still had, uh, um, curfews and, and everything else. They didn't want people out on the streets. And I went for a walk. And, uh, when I came back, dude, my son was doing something that I didn't like, you know, when I say my son, he, he was 22, 23 at the time. And, uh, dude, I lost it. And it almost turned physical. I threw him out of the house right after a hurricane, you know, and, and that's to the point that I was getting to that I, I knew I had to do something, you know? Yeah. And that's and my wife kind of volunteered me. I need to do something too. You know? <laughs> I get that. <laughs> I, I volunteered myself, man. I, I get that. Uh, my breaking point, God, four years ago, I think now, <laughs> three, four years ago, uh, I sat there one night and I don't know what was going on, but I, I just, I couldn't function anymore. Uh, I was just bawling my eyes out. I sat there and I couldn't feel anything. There was nothing. Uh, Like I was bawling because I couldn't feel anything. And I grabbed a gun and I put it to my head and I just sat there and I was just like, do I feel anything? Am I worried about this? Am I concerned about this? And I said, and my answer to that was no. And I was like, I could do this right now and I wouldn't give a shit. And I was like, you're fucked up. Yeah. You, you can't do this anymore. And, uh, you know, I, this, and at this point, you know, I've got a, I've got a wife and kids in the house with me and it, it was just like, what in the hell are you doing? Yeah. So I called my dad in tears. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I said, I gotta go get help. And I spent a week, uh, in a behavioral health unit. And it was the best, best thing I did. Yeah. I mean, it got me back on my feet it was the break I needed. Uh, it was a crazy deal. And, you know, and a lot of people look down at you for that. And, you know, I could be happier. I did it. Yeah. I agree. Uh, it, and I still had a lot of problems after that. Don't get me wrong, but I was never to that point again. I don't you think know? there's a cure for our problems. I think there's a, um, 
what's the the proper words there there's treatments to get us here but there's never it's not like covid and 14 days our problems are right. gone you know yeah cuz we know how 14 days turned out yeah <laughs> two yeah. years later <laughs> yeah so, to go off what you were saying though with your you know you separate yourself from your family i did that yeah i think it's uh, it's a know, real common thing yeah and that's what ended up leading to my divorce uh, and you know, I do, I regret it. I, there's nothing you can do about it, though. I mean, you, you try to deal with it the best you can, but I was right there with you, man. Uh, where I was like, I, I, I'd get home and I'd go into my, my closet and just, I wanted to be isolated, but I wanted to be near the people that it was weird. Cause I wanted to just, I, I just want to talk to guys like TJ or, uh, my buddy that understood what I was going through, that knew what I'd been through. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't vent out like I should have. I didn't deal with things how I probably should have. I didn't talk to my wife. I didn't do anything I should have. Yeah, but I was I was just so focused on God. Like, how do I get that sense of like being back? Yeah. So. You know, I, I started, I'm in the middle of writing a book myself and my, well, congrats. That's awesome. my purpose for it is because I still have a hard time talking about some of the stuff right. and I want my kids to, to know where I was and what I was going through because all they know is the effect from that. They don't know the cause. They know what else how the home life was, you know? And, uh, so that's the purpose of writing. And, uh, you know, my daughter is kind of my editor right now. She, cause she's extremely smart, you know? And, uh, so she's, she's even told me, she's like, man, I didn't know a lot of this. And, but that's the purpose of the book. You know, I might have to do an audio one for my son because I, I doubt he'll read the whole book. But uh, no. um, <laughs> he's like, I want me, you man. to do the audio for it. You should do the audio for it for sure. I, I, I probably will, man. I, you know, Dexter did uh, an audio for his too. And uh, that's how I got through his book before the interview was uh, I bought the book. Um, here, let me, grab, let me grab it real quick. Yeah, I was going to say, you should send us the uh, audio link up for that, for the book, book itself. Right. Uh, yeah, because so you just send us the book link. This is this to... is the book that, that he wrote, and then uh, I downloaded the audio version so I could listen to it for our work back and forth. Yeah, and uh, that's how I got through it, so that I could you know kind of talk educatedly about it when we did the interview. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I can't. I'm not a reader either, man. Ten, fifteen. Yeah, pages. I'm not either, man. I try to be. Yeah, I can get yeah. about ten, fifteen pages out, and then I'm I'm done. I gotta have a lot of pictures as I read. Yeah. yeah. No, there's no pictures in here. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, like because... I said, Nick Nick Wingo's got a book, and I was trying to read through that sucker before we had the podcast with him, man. I was just struggling. I was like, it's a good, it's such a good book. I, I, I that was the best I've done with a book, probably. But I it's... still struggled with it because I was like, I just fall asleep as I read. Yeah, that's how I am, man. This book was is 303 pages. And I would have needed to schedule that interview for 2024 <laughs> to get through it. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I struggled with uh, Jared Taylor's book, too. Um, I had him on the show, too. I, I don't know if you guys seen it or not, but uh, um, another another good book, man, but there's no audio version. So, yeah, no, I've been meaning to watch it, uh, but it was funny that you talk about Jared Taylor because the, the Jared Taylor I know is from uh, Drinking Bros. Oh, okay. I don't know if you follow Drinking Bros. Yeah. But uh, there was Jared Taylor on Drinking Bros, and he was uh, whatever you want to call the Air Force, uh, Special Forces kind of thing. And he's such a cool dude. But I was like, Jared Taylor, oh my God. And then I was like, I started looking into it. I was like, oh, that's not the same Jared Taylor. No, definitely not. <laughs> it's like, my bad. This is an Army 11 Bravo. To watch it. But yeah, I was being to watch that one. I'm, excited. I'm so excited. I think that's on the playlist I have on our uh, YouTube page. That's awesome, man. And and dude, I I, I don't remember who you said, whether, whether that was uh, TJ's uh, idea or not, but uh, man. That is that was an awesome idea. I've never even thought about something like that. That 
yeah it was, it was me and tj were just talking what like two nights two three nights ago and he's like he's like man be so cool if we could have like a youtube page like a that we or uh, something like a video channel like kind of like your radio channel that you have but for mm-hmm. video that was like wow shit bro i was like i'll just throw together a youtube playlist of everyone's shit like anyone that's involved with uh, the veteran community, I was like, I'll just throw together a playlist under our playlist and uh, make it public. And, you know, then it's shareable and anyone can watch it. And I was like, so anyone that comes to our page, uh, yeah, if you look under our <laughs> playlist, we've got our show, we've got your show, uh, we've got Contagion Effect, we've got uh, Every Second Counts. Uh, and a couple other shows, you know, uh, it's yeah. just anything we can do to help spread the word. Yep. Word, the better we're doing. Yep. And and that's, you know, everybody that I bring on, you know, and, and all of your guys and stuff, everything I see in the feed, dude, I, I share and, and try to get the word out. Even uh, Scott's, you know, he's trying to win that, that chopper, you know, I vote every day and, and I share it every day and, and, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just it's about helping, helping the other. community, man. You know, the uh, I did an interview, um, and I thought this was so cool, dude. I never heard of this before. A, a buddy of mine who is into racing led me to a uh, group called uh, Battle Scars uh, Motorsports. They're oh. they're Marines, right? Uh, <clears throat> retired. They have gotten sponsors. And they build race cars and put veterans in them to drive them. And they That's awesome. they, they tour throughout the United States. They run uh, road ki- road races uh, in the Champ Series, which is like the very bottom of of IndyCar, you know. So it was just when I seen that dude, I was like, oh y'all y'all are coming on the show, whether you know it or not. You're coming on the stamp <laughs> show. <laughs> but yeah, dude, and it was. I was like, man, such an awesome idea, you know, and great group of guys, man. I'll, I'll turn you all on to them, too. They, yeah, I'd love they're, that, they're busy man. as hell right now because it's in the middle of racing season. And But they got chapters in uh, uh, Indiana. Um, they're trying to get one in Illinois, uh, Texas, Mississippi, you know, and they, they've got like 13 cars, you know. That's so cool. Yeah. So I was like. I was like, dude, that is an awesome idea. I don't know, you know, how healthy that is. I mean, I guess if I was suicidal and you put me in a race car, it might not be a good deal, you know, but he was, he was talking about how most of them, you know, they're, they're like 20 seconds off the the lap, off the lead paces race, you know, they're, they're just out there having a good time. And I was like, well, if you need them to go faster, you should put like red and blue lights in the back. They'll just think they're back in the military and the cops are chasing them. Yeah, you just naturally you pick up on it. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah you just kind of, I gotta get away. I gotta get away. Yeah. The yeah. MPs just are be after careful. me. Oh my God. Just be careful in the pit stop because then they're going to probably start swinging on people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> but they were, they're a great group of guys, man. And uh, they do everything internally. Um, they got some pretty decent sized sponsors in uh, um, the racing world, you know for not so much for money but you know they send parts and they they had a a a group of people that uh did transmissions for them and you know and as you can imagine you know these cars are definitely not soldier proof you know yeah that's awesome i I wish that you know stock car racing and stuff is big here in north platte and you know i I wish north platte is a little bit bigger uh i'd love to you know help them out try to get them in contact with some guys here because it is, it's huge here. Yeah. And that's something that goes on every summer, every year. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to go out to uh, Waverly uh, there right outside Lincoln, the, the racetrack yep. out there every weekend. But in the summertime, my wife knew our dates consisted of going to the races. That's where we went. Yeah. Every weekend, man, you hear them, you hear them out here. You just hear just the yep. all, all night, yep. you know, and I'm close enough now that I hear it. And I love it. Yep, like, I it's just that. such, because they've got those, they've got sprint cars. It's so cool to me. I love that stuff. Yeah. I, I would mean, tell my just, wife, if you want to catch a movie, you got to wait till the winter's on. <laughs> you <laughs> gonna have to. No, geez, man. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's so cool. And there's so many good things going on 
I just, it's hard to keep up with. It is. It is do the and and that's and as you probably already have realized, dude. That's the great thing about podcasting is you get to bring people on the show. You you learn new ideas and and new techniques and and new methods and and new experiences every day. You know, I, I schedule as many interviews as I can, dude. I I can't tell you how many people I Facebook message. And if I don't get a response, I just keep Facebook messaging. <laughs> yeah, that's how we are, man. Uh, yeah. We're the same way. It's like we're like we're trying to get a hold of big people. Like uh, I've reached out to Vet TV. I'm waiting for an email back from I have them because <laughs> they were like, "Hey, I'll send it up the I'll send it up the chain link or the wow, like, you got a response." Yeah, they, dude, they I got a response. And they were, and never even responded. Yeah, they they sent me a response, and he was like, "I'll send it up the link," and I was like, "Sweet, dude." I was like, I'm so excited about this. And then TJ had reached out to a Revenant Warriors and we got them. And then I'm like, I need to get back in touch with a couple of people, but I've got such like a, I've got a great list. Yeah. And I'm just like sitting here like, and it stinks. I've, cause I feel like I'm on a, I'm a standpoint. It, thanks to TJ having fucking army shit. <laughs> so all next yeah. month, all next oh, month, TJ is busy. Oh damn! And y'all, I'm just y'all like gonna, y'all are gonna have to record some and and uh, schedule yeah, that's it. what we're and that's what we're trying to do. And yep. I'm just but like but like you said, man, you you start talking to people and you start networking and you just you you build these connections. And I'm I just I'm so excited about it. It's so fun to me. Yeah, it's just it's, like it's the greatest shit on earth. Yeah, and there's therapy in what we do. I've gotten probably just as much, if not more, out of podcasting than what the listeners have gotten. You know, I, Ooh, yeah, I, I exactly, talk, yeah. I talk, uh, I can talk about a lot more things than I used to talk about, you know, and that, that's probably TJ and myself too. Yeah, dude, yep, dude. definitely. And, and it's, it's again, it's because of the guests. It's not because of me or because of podcasting. It's, it's because of the like-minded people that we're bringing on our shows that can relate, you know, yep. or, or a story that they said. And you're like, holy fuck. I remember this time that such and such happened or you know i had uh sal gonzalez on here and uh where he got hurt uh outside ramadi dude i was there that was i was in ramadi i know that traffic circle he's talking about you know right outside the that little shit hooch that they had attached to it that we now gave to the uh the iraqis you know that's where they were based out of he was a, a marine as well oh. and uh yeah that, that place was like fucking Compton, you know, it was it was a fucking dangerous place, man. And yeah. I wasn't there at the same time that all happened, but but I, I that was my last deployment was was there in Ramadi, and so yeah, I I I, I knew it when he said it. I, I mean, it just brought back memories because you know we used we'd go to Fluja from Ramadi, and and we weren't supposed to go out that back gate that takes you through that same area where he was at, and. uh yeah, dude, it was nothing. You still see people standing on top of roofs with AK-47s watching the uh, the Iraqi base. You would hear the Iraqis right. just getting fucking tore up with 50 cows and and everything else, you know. Right. And uh, so it, it was it was a shithole, man. And and to hear those stories, you know, it brought back some of the the memories, and and you know, we shared them with each other, and it was like I'd known him my whole life. I was gonna say, yeah, that's you can sit there and you have these connections with these you know, <clears throat> stories and you get to have that fun time and kind of remembrance. I think right now, one of the bigger things going on is with this whole Afghanistan pullout. Oh, yeah. And it's like, so many of us were there yep. and you sit there and you look at how it was done. How do we deal with that? You know, I think, this is my theory, all right? And, I, and I've talked to a lot of people about it, and, and I hear one thing. I don't think, if you want to know the truth, I think a lot of the soldiers that was there, and, and probably the Marines too, we knew that there was more to this story than what we're being told. You know, right. By my last deployments, I knew this wasn't about protecting America anymore. There was more to this story. You know, I always felt like if we really wanted to end Afghanistan, it would have ended in Operation Anaconda. And 
we didn't, we stopped. And then this war went on forever, you know? Right. And I think the, the one thing that every soldier had in their mind was I'm doing this and we're ending this now. So my kids don't have to do it. Yeah. And then the way we pulled out, everybody knew our grandkids and our kids' generation will be back over there again. Yeah, they're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. And that's and the I biggest think that's what I think that's what bothers you because, you know, we at first it was it was about the towers. And then as the war went on and on and the things that we were seeing on ground, we knew, you know. Well, we knew that, it became political because yeah. there were several times we could have ended the, the shit. Yeah. You know, we went in, we took fucking cities, and then we were we're halfway through a city, and they're like, "Hold the fuck back up!" And then you look at the rules of engagement that we had, yeah, and you you're looking at everything that was in place, and you're like, "This is a political shit show." Yep. So remove the political handcuffs, and just let us do our thing. Yep. Let you know, you look at General Mattis. He was going through there. We we had a situation that was manageable. And then we said, no, back out. Yeah. How many I, times? I, how many times did we do that? I always kind of picture it like if, if Afghanistan was a horse race, Afghanistan's jockey was standing up and reeking on the fucking reins, trying to yeah, get I that think horse so to too. stop. You know, because that's what it felt like. When, when we literally started knocking on fucking people's doors and saying, hey, we're going to come in and search. Let us know when you got everything hid. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was a fucking joke. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 kind of like a Vietnam point, too. I mean, in my eyes, because you sit there and you look, you just look at it and historically looking at it. Ru- what Russia's tried to take Afghanistan. Yeah. And they got their ass kicked. The British. Uh, the uh, British, British tried. Af- Russia tried, tried twice. Yeah, and got and their they, then they got their ass kicked. We yeah. went in and we could have kicked the shit out of them. Yep. We and we them. were. We trained them to beat yeah. Russia. We were. We were kicking the shit out of them, and we had every opportunity to take advantage of that, and we didn't. And it just blows my mind. You, you know, know, when I sit there and think about it, and and, and like I said, I think mean, the, the the draw withdrawal and the pullout, yeah, it just. I don't know. It, it just, it doesn't sit right. Yeah, it don't. And here's the other thing that I always hated too. And, and I seen quite a bit of it. The, the, the 10 years that I was in the special ops community, those guys would be up there in the Northern areas and the, the Eastern areas. And these guys would literally run across into the Paki um, borders. We put borders on these countries. There wasn't no fucking government there when we got there. It was ruled by a, 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 a gang. The Taliban was a gang that well, ruled and every, the territory. Everything there is ruled based off a religious. Yeah. They don't have law and order. They have the religion of that area. You know, I, I always pictured it like the big cities gangs. I have these blocks. They have these blocks. And that's the way Syria, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all these countries are. And so to sit there and tell me that I'm standing there and looking at a tallywhacker that fucking ran across the damn border and now I can't engage. Yeah. You've got Shiites, you've got Sunnis, and then you've got third party yeah. over there. Yeah. Where they're just trying to get along. And But yeah, you're sitting there and you're looking at the situation and you're like, okay, so unless they fucking shoot at me, I'm not allowed to do shit. Yeah. I see yeah. Dick Wad planning a bomb, but I can't do shit. Yeah. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? And that's and that's why the the uh the Iraqi police checks and all that shit became extremely dangerous because we did nothing. You well, know? I'm sure TJ can kind of testify to you know with the IED rules that we had in place. Oh yeah. Uh, you, you know, we sat there with IEDs and they picked up on what we were doing. They knew exactly what we were doing. Nope. And TJ had the pleasure, uh, if you will, of going out and checking for these sons of bitches. Oh, hell yeah. I did uh, the best method that we could come up with. It was great. I'll run it over, see if it blows up or not. Oh, you you <laughs> drove the minesweeper, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, if you want to call it that. Yeah, it had a big old plow in the front of it. Most of the time. Yeah. Until you, until you found <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, well, it was until fucking pointless. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my hat's off to you, man. I couldn't have done that job. You know, that whole driving routes and clearing routes at like 10 miles per hour. I just, I yeah, that. I they figured it. it out though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they just sit there and watch this and then they realize that we got this big fucking heavy thing on the front of the truck. So instead of putting the IED directly under the pressure plates, they put the IEDs, you know, 10 or 15 feet before the pressure plates so that whenever the roller hit the pressure plate, then it blows up under the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, their their tactics literally change faster than we could train the troops. You know, and well, they train they they change faster than we were willing to accept what they're doing. We refused to accept that they were as smart as they were. Yeah, I mean, look at look at their mortars, their how their mortar systems went. You know, they they literally got to the point where they realized if I if I launched a mortar anywhere into a fob, and then I wait a few minutes there's going to be a gathering around that same spot yep. where there's going to be people trying to get a back azimuth of where it came from and everything else. So they would literally just launch one and then try to hit that exact same spot again with a second one. You know, they're not dumb people, man. No, they just I was going to say IEDs, you know, we go, we disarm the IED. They knew within 24 hours we had to come recheck. So they knew within 24 hours, if they replanted an IED, they could sit there, watch, and then blow up the ID and kill the EOD crew that was there. Yeah. They weren't stupid. No, they were not, man. You know, it, it's just, and then and, we treat it like they are. And that showed with the withdrawal. I mean, we were just like, yeah, fuck it. We'll just leave. Oh, my God. Where's yeah. going back home? Well, and, and, and look at how soon, you know, we hadn't even killed Bin Laden yet. And we were already in the rebuild process we were building schools and roads and and trying to train and put governments in place you know that exit strategy shit yeah we were we were trying to win hearts and minds and it it doesn't really make sense when you're fighting an ideology yeah because an idea i mean i mean think about it i mean try to change somebody's mind about christianity well you're not going to do it and it's it's more than that. If if I lived in a little village, I'm going to be loyal to whoever's got the gun in my face at the time. Exactly. <laughs> you know. But I mean that, and that was the thing there over there. You know, it was like, who's going to protect me? Who's going to take care of me the right. best? And the yeah. we weren't going to be that. No. Or who's you know not going to murder my family? You yep. know? Yeah. Exactly. You know, and so at the end of the day. They played the loyalty game. They did the same thing in Vietnam, you know, the same thing in Korea. All these wars, you know, you can't, you can't use, and we've learned that you cannot get information from somebody that is trustworthy if you're using fear and pain, because they're going to tell you whatever that is going to get it to stop. Yeah, I think General Mattis was the one that said it. And I could be wrong. I'm not going to misquote Mattis, but he said the only way to win this war is to kill so many of them that they're tired of us killing them. Yeah. And when you look at war, you you nobody wants to think that. Nobody, especially in the country we live in, we're so we're a very soft community, we're a very soft generation. Nobody wants to kill anybody. And I and I agree. I don't want to either, but the only way you're going to win a war and that's what people have to realize is it's a war. Yeah. And, and is, where it takes we go that. wrong is, is we think that by the time the war is over, you should be a democracy. You know? Yep. They didn't invite us. They didn't ask no. us to come over there. So to try to push our agendas on them is no different than what the Taliban was doing to them. Yeah. You to know? get a win, we expected them to have our system in place. And, and and you can't do that. You have to have different. There just has to be it. We have to understand that they don't work that way. Yeah. And you have to put in place something that works for them. Yep. And we didn't, yeah, try, we didn't try to do that. Yeah. This doesn't make sense considering how great our system is, you know. Well, uh, right. look at <laughs> look how uh, <laughs> Iraq went. 
you know, at the end of Iraq, we were like, well, we're, we want to uh, leave an embassy here. They're like, okay, we'll let you have a U.S. embassy. Um, we're going to leave 200 troops. No, 100 troops. No, you can leave 13 troops. That's enough to guard your embassy. They didn't want us there no more. Yeah, because you, know, they, you they're, caused they're, such a ruckus. I mean, yeah. fuck, I wouldn't want us there either, man. You know, so, and and when I was in Ramadi, you know, our mission was to go train uh, Iraqis in Fallujah, you know, and part of that requirement was they were supposed to give up people for classes so we could teach them how to work on the Humvees that, that we sold them. We taught them logistics and, and how to keep the, the supplies moving. Dude, we would give them the parts for, for the Humvees and the, the base commanders would sell it to whoever the highest bidder was. You know, and then we'd say, oh, hey, we're going to give you a class on how to troubleshoot this. And they would give us that one guy that they were pissed off at that day that doesn't speak any English. You know, and half our interpreters didn't know some of the lingo that we were talking. So I was like, this is fucking stupid. You know, this is a waste of fucking time and, and endangerment of troops. You know. Yeah, I get you. I, I want to pick TJ's brain. How do you feel about all this? I don't, I don't think I, I don't ever, I never really bug your mind politically. Oh man. Uh, that's going to have to wait like a year and a half. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. My bad. My bad. That's why I don't bug your mind about them. So that's great. <laughs> I forgot about that. I'll give you my two cents. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you hundred percent. It just, there's so many th- fucking things that just don't make sense in how we faced it and how we dealt with it. Um, and, and I think some of that's the underlying problems that we're dealing with now. I, uh, you know. Yeah, I think so too. You know, there, there's and, a lot of frustration, and and you know, the the way we see we're being treated now, there's not a lot of trust within the government and and us. You know, and fuck, you can't you can't go to the social media or the news to try to figure out what's going on because you don't know what's real and what's not anymore. You know. No, you right? don't. We have no idea. So. Which is just insane. <clears throat> well, it's not really insane to me because I think it's always been that way. Yeah. I think the media has always tried to pick like what they thought was the better side. And now you, you have no freaking idea what the better side is. The The media agencies are bought. You can watch on. So I, I'm a history guy. And if you go me too. on, if you go on to YouTube, there's a series called The Men That Made America. Mm-hmm. All the way back then, they did the same thing that's going on right now. That when all the houses was lit by gas and and uh, heated by gas and, and all that type of stuff, and electricity was being invented, they would pay the media to put stories out about how electricity is dangerous and it'll burn your house down. You know, an electric company that was trying to to push electricity as the the main way to to deal with energy was doing the same thing. They were putting articles about how, how messy and how dangerous gas is and the press was paying whoever paid them, you know? And, and we're, if you look at where we're at now with batteries and and everything else, we're in that same, that same agenda. Yeah. I was going to say, you've been, you've been around a tick more than me and that's not my way of calling you old. That's just me (laughs) fucking being like, I I, I don't want to be saying that I'm fucking, I have all this knowledge and I may probably don't, but to me, it seems like, uh, the media has always kind of followed who's in control. Yep. And I feel like we've hit a point right now where they don't have a freaking clue yeah, and don't. everything is so split yep. and biased because nobody has a clue who's in charge anymore. Yep. They, they've they now, it's not about money, but they've chosen sides to be loyal to. And yeah, and I feel like will... there's such a huge just, gap in who anyone trusts that you have no idea yeah look what look what elon musk has done he's 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 proved that yeah absolutely but it's just crazy to me to think about that like i i have nowhere to go for reliable information i don't i I don't even try i mean there's probably places uh i think coffee or die does a good job about at least getting stories out but it's because they're not focusing on sides they're just focused on like hey here's a real story yeah. This is fu- this is effed up. Yeah. I've How always, can we address this? I've always considered myself to be politically homeless. That's that's Same. where I'm at. You know. Yeah. 
So I don't have sides. I vote for the guy that I think is going to take care of America and take care of our troops. Yeah. That's all if I you'd ask me, if you asked me like five, 10 years ago, I'd have been like, I'm Republican, yep. but I was stupid at the time, yeah. you know? And I thought I knew better because, you know, that's how I was raised. Now, if you ask me, I'm like, nah, man, I don't trust either side. They're both kind of, I'm, I'm just going to go with, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to go with who I think is going to do the best job. Yep. And at the end of the day, the, the fact is we have too big of a government that's got too much power and we're overregulated. And that's why we can't yeah. compete economically. We can't compete educatedly, you know, because of overregulations and, and overtax. There's just no. Yeah. Problem. And I mean, it's like everyone compares us to Rome back yeah. to Dem- Dem- Democratic Rome. Yep. And, and I'm with them, man. I am. Too. We've hit that. We've hit that point, man, where it's just like. Where do we go from here? We've hit that kind of 200 year mark. It's like, shit's going to start going downhill. Right. I I agree with that. I think that some of these people (laughs) just need to be thrown in a pit and fight a lion. And if they win, then like, damn, like, good on you. You know, how cool would that be? I think we should bring that back. I I agree. That's what I'm saying. You know, I got some shit right back then. We can even make it more modern day. I'm not, I'm not completely against the purge. You know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 24 hours everyone just fucks shit up i like yep. this but uh i'm gonna hide in my house because i'm a little bitch these days that was one <laughs> of the things i was going to ask you about she, she's crazy uh so when i hit my point of like we're you know no reconciliation where i was just like i need help i but th- even before that i think i had hit a point so in the marine corps i was pretty angry mm-hmm. and you know i was very like outspoken and i did all this thing i don't know if this is just a me thing i'm such a wuss anymore I, i'm just like i'm anti-conflict i'm anti dealing with people's shit i just want to like live life be happy and, and not deal with people's <clears throat> bullshit i think that that kind of goes part along with why we want to isolate if you if you want to yeah. know the truth you know it's it's we're tired of fighting and and you look at you know, like I said, I've been 68 months total out of 20 years. I spent 68 months deployed. You know, that doesn't include training exercises and everything else that's away from, right. from your families. And when the war first kicked off, I remember asking the brigade commander, when is it going to be our turn? You know, and he said, watch what you wish for, because you're about to get it. And by the end of my deployment, I was like, when is it somebody else's fucking turn? Because I'm getting tired. I was at the end of my career and I just wanted, I had a negative attitude about the army. I had a negative attitude about my family. I had a negative attitude about everything. And I didn't want to deal with anybody because I I didn't want to fight, but I didn't want to listen to people. So I would go home, eat dinner and go to my bedroom and put on Netflix. Yeah. That's what I I guess that makes so much sense. That's what I was asking is like, is it normal? Well, because I just about, don't want to, like, I'm just, I'm tired. I, you know, if that makes any goddamn sense, I'm just tired. And, and think about this, right? One of the largest industries that hire veterans is the trucking world. And the main reason why is because you're alone. Yeah. And it's the worst thing for veterans. The one thing that I, one problem that I think really escalated all my problems was, was every day I drove. 600 to 650 miles, 11 hours of nothing but thinking. And then when you There's stop in your own head. Yep. And then when you stop, you, you get out and, and, you know, when I, I brought my, started taking a dog with me and, and I, you know, after that, dude, my attitude did get a little bit better. You know, I still had bad days, but I do believe having, I do believe there's a such thing as an emotional support animal, you know, I'm not saying there's an emotional support uh, do, donkey, you know. But I do believe in working dogs and, and service dogs and, and stuff like that. So, because I've seen a difference now that I can look back at it. I, I do remember I was happier driving when I had her versus before her, you know. But you would stop and, and some night, dude, I can tell you, there there's was a, a lot of days that I got back up and would take off after my 10-hour break. And I hadn't slept. I've been up all damn night. Yeah, I'm with you. I uh, you know? 100% understand that. 
you know, which ain't safe. And I would get to customers and, and I had a shitty attitude and, you know, nothing could make me happy because I wasn't happy with myself, you know? And, and I think that's part of where the isolation comes from. That's what drives us to be alone because we're getting away from everything that we're blaming. That's not making us happy. You know, it's not me, it's them. It's, it's not me. It's this, it's, you know, so we isolate ourselves from that, which puts us in a box by ourselves. And guess what? We're still not happy. You know, so I think some of that has to do with it. You know, I think some of it's also social media. You know, I'm not a big fan of it. And, and, I, and I'm also not a big fan of uh, these reels and uh, um, TikToks and shit. I think it's, you know, the problems that, that veterans have, I don't think it's healthy to take them and get them used to having a, a mindset of 30 seconds. If I'm not happy with the 30 seconds, I'm going on, you know, I don't care who, what you are. You're not going to find happiness in 30, well, maybe in bed, but you're not going to find happiness. I was going to say, say, that's the only way I find happiness is is in 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, Shit. I've done at least three times in that amount. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, say, that's including uh, foreplay and. uh, Yeah. I'm dressed by that time. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm dressed. I'm ready. I've got a sandwich made within 30 (laughs) seconds. It's all dealt with and done with. Yeah. I'm only going to be in memory at that point. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I I don't think it's healthy, you know, and I'm with you. If you, if you are a stat guy and, and, you know, I'll throw a bet out there. But I, I can promise you that you have in your, your Facebook, Facebook Live sessions that you lose at least a 5% of your viewers before your intro is over with. Oh, I'm sure. You know, yeah, you'll see everyone, them pop on and then they're gone. It's, a generation, gone. Of, it's a generation of instant gratification. Nobody's really willing to stick around and like listen to the story and listen to the values and, and try to figure that out. And I'm gonna tell you because if, you know if I wanted if I wanted to control people, that's what I would want you to do. Because yeah, exactly. you're not gonna take the time to to think for yourself because you're not gonna get all the information. You're gonna make a decision. And I don't know about for you, but one of the problems I had um when I think back of it was. I made erratic decisions. Um, I got mad at my son again over my truck. I had a a F-250, I mean, oversized uh, injectors, bigger turbo. I mean, dude, it was a badass truck. It wasn't pretty, but it was my truck. I loved (laughs) it, you know? And I would be gone for six weeks and come home and have to fix my truck because my son drove it. And he probably didn't do anything to it, but it was broke. You know, and right. so I finally I lost my temper and I just fucking woke up one day and said, you know, I'm gonna trade it. And I traded it on Facebook that day for a fucking Camaro. And then, you know, I, I'm with you. I get that. I, I don't know what it is about erratic decisions. And fuck, maybe it's just you and me. TJ, I don't know if you do this shit. I, I do this shit a lot, man, where I'm just like. Fuck it. I'm going to yep. buy this. Yeah. Or fuck it. I, I'm I just going to sell that. this. Don't, don't, I, uh, I'm s- don't such go on a, to gun sites drunk. I'm gonna tell you that much. That's yeah, that's I'm so that. bad at it. Where I'm like, eh, you know what sounds great right now? This, and then I'm just like, fuck it, I'm doing it. And yeah, I'm, just, I'm not a thinker. I'm a doer. You know. Yep. What I mean? yep. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get the positives out of it. You know, I don't fuck around. I just all find out. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm no fuck around. I'm all find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the first stage. I ain't got time for that shit. <laughs> we ain't got time for this. Yep. Uh, or we're maybe, just gonna find on, out maybe, what happens. Maybe I'm all fuck around. Huh. No, I'm gonna tell you, man. <laughs> you might I'm gonna, be TJ. <laughs> I'm gonna show you this. So my son-in-law got me these, and I absolutely love them. So I drink a lot of bourbon, right? These are uh, just metal that you freeze, and instead of putting shit, ice yeah. that waters them down. They're I bullets. need 26 of those. Yeah, they're like bullets, and they come in a uh, a, a six-pack that's got a holder that you put in your freezer that's shaped like a revolver. Dude, it, they're badass, man. I absolutely love them. 
I you had know? 26 of these. I'm going to get online and buy them right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, there goes that instant shit right now. I just I just sold you on some bullet ice. <laughs> it takes no... It, that's what it's called. God damn it. I don't really, really am looking this shit up. I don't know what they're really called. Whiskey stones, man. Is that what Something they're called? Like whiskey stones? Yeah, or, you know, any variation. Like bourbon rocks, whiskey, whiskey rocks, or whatever. Dude, I, I love you them. Stick man. them in your freezer, get them cold, and they don't water down your, your bourbon. Yep. yep. They're awesome, yeah. man. I've made some, thought about selling them for the brand, you know, but really. Oh shit. Found it's on Amazon. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. Everything. If, if it ain't on bingo, Amazon, bingo. you don't need it. Yep. That's them. <laughs> that is them. <laughs> All right. It's even cheaper for the silver ones. All right. We're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is happening. It'll be here by April 19th. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. This is how this shit goes, man. Yep. This is my problem. Yeah, I, I agree. See, I, I, this show is supposed to help you, and I just contributed. I'm all for it. I'm all for it, man. Yeah, man. It's like I don't drink anymore, but goddamn it, them are great. They, hey, they work with Pepsi's too, you know. So that's I, what I'm I, saying. I put Pepsi with my uh, Maker's Mark, you know. I drink. Uh, I drink. I've been drinking these uh, sp- sparkle. What are they? Sparkling ice waters. Or okay. something, yeah. Oh, they're so good, man. They yeah. they keep me off with whiskey until I feel like drinking whiskey, and then I drink whiskey. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. it's great. So <laughs> I'm probably uh, yeah. At some point, you know, some ATF guy is going to listen to my podcast. But so I I just ordered a uh, charred uh, uh, one gallon uh, barrel with uh, with the two drunk dude logo on it, and I got yeah. a buddy of mine that makes some some liquor. And uh, so I bought a gallon from him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to make my own version of uh, of bourbon. So I'm gonna age that's it. Awesome. Too. I'm gonna age it for a couple of years. You know, that's one of those things I actually really want to get into. Is I want to get like buy my own distillery. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, set and then like make my own bourbon. And my biggest problem with that is it's a two year process. It is, yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know if I'm that patient. Yeah. Well. You get a sample at every six months, so you get something. Yeah, I, I was going to say, apparently, if you put it, uh, put it on a boat for six months, this is my from watching, uh, what is that, Moonshiners. Oh, yeah, if you put yeah. it on a boat for six months, it ages like it would have in five years. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that because it's all, because you you have to rotate the barrels and everything. And then yeah. the, the hot and cold um, is, is going to, the more drastic that is, the faster it'll age because the barrel swells and, and everything else. So the more extreme oh, weather yeah. that you guys have, because if you go to the distilleries, you know, all their, their um, things are not, you know, they're open, you know, so that they get the the elements in them. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I, mean, I just need to do always it around that. Right. So you, you get the barrel that you're aging it in and then, you know, add some bearings and shit to the top of it and put you like a little uh, weather vane on there with an agitator in the barrel. Oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That is a, that is a damn good idea too. TJ's I'm an alcohol s- wizard as well. It turns out <laughs> Some, something of the sorts. Yeah. He, uh, just, he knows is. everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an alcohol thick. <laughs> I'm a, I'm an alcohol dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, man. Well, I love it, man. Hey, I, I appreciate you guys coming on, man. This has been a damn good time. Oh, yeah, it's been a me. great time, man. I appreciate you having us on and just bullshitting and having a good time because, like I said, man, it, for us, it's the same thing, I think, it is, as it is for you. We just want to have guys on, have natural conversations, and yep. just be able to bullshit because I think that's what it takes to remind people that we are – we're all here for a reason. We're all here to have a good time. We're all here to have fun. And, best way to change the stigma surrounding mental health is just talk about it yeah hey uh so you know just to pre-warn you i am going to share every time you sing on uh on facebook i i will share that hey that so sounds the great world to me, is going to see that yeah that sounds great to me brother i appreciate <laughs> I do. it because i, I love doing time. it man. yeah i love doing it man it, it for me it's it's my therapy it, it's just fun when yep. i'm feeling blue when i'm feeling down i pick up my guitar and i just uh, just try to belt one out well, and, if you ever put any tracks down and recording, 
send it to me and it will be on the, the radio. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, I could do that because yeah. uh, they sound a lot better when I record on the uh, garage band and then I okay. sit there and I get pissed off because I don't know how to make a video. Uh, I tried to make a video once with my garage band recording and it was like audio file or video file too small. And I was like, oh, God damn it. I was like, couldn't figure it out. Every time like, I try to send a dick pic, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got that same problem, man. Every time I try to send a pic, it's like too small. Audio file too small. Check Picture out, file too small. Check out Audacity. It's, Audacity? Uh, yep, yeah, it's it's just audio. There's no video, and it's free. And it's hey, got give a shot, absolutely bro. everything you need to edit audio. That's what I use. And you can you'll, it can easily turn it into an MP3 or MP4, whatever you want to turn it into. Wave file. So. Yeah, I was going to say GarageBand, I could do all that. I just can't figure out the video side of things. I'm like uh, working with a drunk monkey. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you just clicking buttons, pushing things. You have no idea what's happening anymore. <laughs> I, I just, I'm winging it from the hips. I need uh, I need to find somebody that's a lot more technologically proficient than yeah. what my ass is. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't easy. I will tell you, it is not easy. My, my hat's off to people who do this for a living because I couldn't do it. I, Me too. I would I'm be gonna, frustrated. Uh, I'm gonna start doing what you do. I'm not gonna Google the shit out of this stuff. That's that's how, that's how I learn, man. You know, we've been we've been podcasting now. I think we're I'm almost at my hundredth uh, episode. So oh, that's awesome! Incredible. We've been around for just a little bit. You just gonna invite invite like all 90, 98 guests back on for the hundredth episode? There is some guests that I'm gonna have come back on. Um, so there's an organization that I thought was just cool, and and not just because I served with her. Um, but uh, there's an organization called She's the Veteran dot, uh, dot org um, on Facebook. It's just She's the Veteran. Um, she awesome. only deals with uh, female military PTSD. And awesome. when she started talking about it, I never thought about the differences that, uh, you know, between how men and women deal with PTSD. You know, it's it's it isn't uncommon for when when they walk up to a woman and they say, oh, well, who's your husband in? You know. They forget yeah, that women think, can be a, a veteran too. Yeah, yeah I, think I think we just kind entire, of talked about that last week. Yeah, I think the entire experience is just completely different, you know. Yeah, and it is. I think it's awesome that she's doing that because I feel like for we were talking about one time it was like one percent of the population joins the military, yeah. and then we don't have a whole lot of outside of like the VA, you know, we don't have a whole lot of help. But yeah. on that aspect, like one percent of the population, what percent of that is females? Yeah you know and so they have even less help and even like very very like far less uh just organizations dedicated solely to them for nope. their experiences and stuff so well look at right. how high sexual assault is in the military <clears throat> right and then you you start talking about the ptsd that comes from that that is completely different than ptsd from something else you know and, yeah, and you exactly. can't treat things the same, you know, how, how I deal with PTSD and how a woman deals with it, you know, from, from man to man is even different. It's definitely going to be different between men and women. Yeah. I was going to say in situation to situation. Yeah. So, you know, I, yeah, I, she's, I'll, I'll send, I'll send you guys her information too. If you ever the want hats to off to her, that's yeah. incredible. She's yeah. out of uh, Charleston, South Carolina. They, they do uh like weekly uh, Zoom meetings and then monthly outings, and then they they'll as a, have a girls' night out. It's not like therapy; they'll just actually go and and they'll go to a distillery or they'll go to something as a group and and learn something or have an outing. You know, that's incredible. Yeah, it's it's a, it's it's a great organization, man. And then uh, Mo Vets um, here, they're an outdoors organization. They uh, they have what's called Vetapalooza every year. It's similar to Hero Stock. And uh, so I'll have him back on here shortly. I got him on the schedule. I don't remember when. So he can start talking about vet stock. Or, uh, That's so cool. You know, I love that. So, and, th and there's another guy I'm going to hook you guys up with. I served with him. He, dude, he's got so many funny stories. He, he was an EMT before he came in the, uh, the military. Um, he decided to come in as a mechanic. Um, I think something to do with the ASVAB issues. Um, so he came in as a mechanic and then uh, he got out and uh, he's back to being an EMT. 
and he can tell you some some hilarious stories, dude. You know, he 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 can he's got a lot of stuff from his years of experience. He can talk about inner gang life when he was in EMT in uh, Twin Jeez. Cities, and uh, you know, like I said, he deployed with me. I, I was in a. I'll tell you a real quick story. I was in a wrecker with him, and we were on a convoy, and uh, we were driving, and all of a sudden he took off towards the ditch. And I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, dude, you get 25 points for a dog. 50 if it's in Iraq. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, dude, you're going to get us fucking killed over trying to hit a dog. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, he can tell you all sorts of stories, man. But I'm, I'm going to hook you two up with. Yeah, I'd love to him. talk to anyone you got. And we'll send you anyone we got, man. It's just the more we network, the more we reach out. Reach out. Uh, the more we can do, the better and the happier I am. Yeah. Uh, this has become, this is what I do for life and love Yep. Me too. Uh, is, is getting out here and helping people. And I work to support myself and my family the best I can. And I do this because I love doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You me know, too, man. I'm not making money off this. I'm not doing anything. TJ's not making money off this shit. We're just out doing money. it for the love of the game. <laughs> No, yeah, I, we spend money, but we're not fucking right. making it back. Yeah, I do. I don't, you know, I don't. I don't do much fundraising. I'm not good at talking to people, you know, not like that. You know, I don't like asking for help. You know, and Same. Uh, it, you know, I've had to get on Facebook here recently and ask for help because, you know, between my website, the the pod, we used to do two a do a week, and, uh, you know, after uh, um, it became just me. I just, I couldn't keep up with keeping the website updated, keeping Facebook updated and edit and interview and still work my job. You know, I just, it became too much. And then I, I took on the, the radio project right at about that time that it became just me. So I started a project and I don't like quitting. So yeah. Same. Yeah. So yeah, we're the same way, man. Uh, yeah. it's, I'm doing this. I'm doing two other jobs, three other jobs. Yeah. You know, and I'm trying to keep things afloat, but this is what I love doing. I'm going to keep doing it until it burns me out or <laughs> until I'm dead. People, you know, people I, don't see the behind the scenes, the hours that you spend editing and, and uploading and, and trying to figure out how to reach people. You know, I, I, I don't care if you're a civilian or military. You may, you may get some information that you can help your neighbor who's a veteran. You know, I'm good with that. That's what, yeah, that's exactly. what I'm here for is, is to, to spread knowledge and, and, you know, send out resources. And that's why exactly. I switched my intro to where I'm going to start putting all these organizations into my intro to where people can see the different organizations, the different podcasts. I got you guys and, and uh, everybody else. So every Friday when I go live, you know, that 10 minutes or 11 minutes before the, the show starts, I have a, a 10 minute intro and it's just constantly playing. It's got comedians that have been on the show that are veterans, uh, singers, uh, all the podcasts that I, I associate with and every organization out there that, that is, I feel worthy, that is trustworthy. That's going to help. Absolutely. Veterans, you know? So, yeah. And like I said, man, we, we've, if anyone needs to, they can go to our YouTube channel, uh, shadow Mark. And we've got you guys, we've got a bunch of other veteran programs on our playlist i mean that's what we're out here to do is share each other and only the best <laughs> yeah exactly uh, we uh, want everyone to hear about everyone we want the more information we get out there the better yep yep the uh i'm, I'm gonna let you guys know just like i let everybody else know i'm gonna be all hitting y'all up here come uh in a few months because uh, uh i'm gonna start a jacket drive and, and yeah. my my uh goal is is hopefully each people you know between all of us you know they're uh eric and them are out in california you, you're in nebraska tj you're down there in oklahoma i'm here in, in missouri if we all can do a, a jacket drive and try to spread some jackets out to the homeless veterans i think yeah you know that i'll uh, that reach out with the fire department here does a jacket drive every year good. i'll reach awesome. out to them and try to get them included in it and That's awesome, man. do what i can i've got a good connection with them reach out oh, yeah. to them i got a great idea for you on your flyer mm -hmm. or whatever you're gonna put out for that you should uh say that we're gonna see who can <clears throat> who can donate the most jackets you know <clears throat> who's gonna 
make the biggest difference, and you could call it the uh, the jacket off. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna tell you, I might use that. And That's the best no, thing I've heard yeah. in a while. And, and I'm gonna oh, tell you God. why. So I had a Marine on here that started a farm. Right. He's not a he's not a, a veteran organization or anything. But when I heard his name of his farm. I had to have him on the show. The name of his farm is Morningwood Farm. Hell, right? hell yeah. And on his shirt, it says it says we're up before you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. He said that it, that the, the city is starting to grow around him. So he has put in a petition to change the name of the street that he lives on to Morningwood Way so that when he has to finally move to buy some different land because all the suburbs around him, that some rich fucker has to live on Morningwood Way. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, You should check out that episode, man. Morningwood Way or uh, uh, Morningwood Farms, dude. It's, it's yeah, hilarious. I will. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a check. Yeah, man. That's for sure. So. But hey, I, you know, I appreciate. It. I'm going to link you guys. Uh, you know, obviously, I will in 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 everything. And uh, you know, uh, I'll send you the dates that this will go live, and then that following Friday, we'll also do a live uh, um, Facebook thing. Yeah, hell like yeah. I said, man, I'm, I'll shoot out you guys' information and and try to get as many people to you. And I'll also send you a list of, of a lot of great interviews that that I I, I enjoyed. And yeah, I think I'd love to watch everything we can. And well, uh, I'll send you the contact information for the people. So maybe they'll, they can come on your show too, you know? Yeah. I appreciate the shit out of it, man. I love being on here. It's so fun talking to you. It's just been incredible for me. Uh, this is the, this is my therapy too, man. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I love getting to do this. If I can get to do uh, stuff like this, I, I don't know where I'd be. So yeah. I, uh, thank I you so much. I agree. DJ, I, I love your humor, man. You know, you should uh, think about a, a lot of Marines become stand-up comedians, it seems like, because every stand-up comedian I've had on the show has been a Marine. So you might have a career, brother, because you yeah, yeah, he's, he's a comedy relief. I've, I've heard that a lot, but, like, I'm, I'm really not funny. I'm just an asshole. So, like, <laughs> to veterans, I'm funny because, you know, that's just how it is. We're all kind of, you know, dicks. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to use that, dude. I think, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get all these I mean, podcasts together and we're going to have a jacket off. Dude, that's, I love that's, that. that's my favorite. Yep. We're doing it. That, it that's yep. a done deal, dude. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to check it off. I'm gonna, check it off. I, I put everybody <laughs> together into a, uh, a group uh, on Facebook for just us content creators, you know, and, and I haven't used it much, but my thoughts was just, you know, if somebody came up with an idea, it's going in there, dude. So everybody can see it. We're going to have yeah. a jacket off. I love that. Uh, it's yep. going to be beautiful. Yep. Done deal, man. <laughs> this, this Sponsored is a by TJ. It's this a circle is jacket. Big, off. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's, and that can be the, the logo behind it, man. I'll draw like a, 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 a loop from where it each three pull at to make a circle. With a and jacket. Then, then what we're going to do is we're going to post it so the loser gets to move to the center of the circle. Yes. Whoever gets the least amount of jacks gets to be in the center of it. Hell and they yeah. may get I posted on this. the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Be on the receiving end of a big jacket off, you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And and you know what? I think I'm gonna buy uh I'll buy a trophy, man. So whoever does like, do it, I'll get a big, yeah. I'll get a big like uh trophy and put like a, a dildo on it or something. Hell yeah, it'll be like the <laughs> it'll be like the biscuit game. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the images, man. Damn. <laughs> well, guys, I appreciate it, man. And like I said, we'll we'll get everything out there, and uh, we'll get together and and jack it off. No, I love it, man. Thank you so much. I'm I'm looking forward to it. All right, brother. You guys take care. Be safe. Hey, you do the same. Right. Appreciate it,